In this module, we're going to take a look at a few more examples of how to understand the role of these sort of 2D phasor patterns in the computation of the Fourier transform. So here, once again, we have a phasor pattern corresponding to kx equals 0, ky equals 0. Um, all the phasors are pointing in the same direction um, because we're at the center of k-space, so there's no variation in either the x or the y direction. Uh, this is our object composed of ones and zeros. And so you notice that there's zeros along the diagonals. And so when we think about multiplying our object by our phasor pattern, then in looking at the effect of the object on our phasor pattern, we notice that we can sort of just ignore, where we're multiplying by zero, we just ignore uh, the phasors along those diagonals. Okay? So we just sort of get rid of these. And then we sum up what's left. And so we do it by co row, column by column. The sum of this column is 3, 2, 3, 2, 3. So if I all add that all up, I have 9 plus 4, which is 13. So the vector sum here is 13. So this would say that for this object, the Fourier transform at 0, comma 0 is equal to 13. Here we have a different Fourier. Um, phasor pattern for a different location in k space, uh, kx equals 0 0.25, ky equals 0. Once again, we sort of can ignore what's along the diagonal. And we just sum up what's left over. So here we have, um, in this case, we notice that these are pointing uh, along the negative x axis, negative real um, axis, and so this sums up to minus 3. This sums up to 2j. This sums up to plus 3. This sums up to minus 2j. This sums up to minus 3. So the total sum is equal to minus 3. Okay. So we'd say that g of 0 0.25 comma 0 is equal to minus 3. Okay? And we notice that that g of 0 0.25 comma 0, its amplitude is less than the amplitude of the Fourier transform at 0, 0. Uh, and that makes sense because um, even though our, it's saying that the checkerboard pattern, even though it's really not a good match for a uniform phasor pattern, it is a better match, um, the uniform pattern is a better match for this checkerboard than uh, this sort of uh, pattern that's moving left to right. So therefore, the, the amplitude of the Fourier transform here is greater than the amplitude here. Let's move on to our next example, which is a slightly more complicated object. Instead of ones and zeros, we have minus one where it's blue, and then plus one along those other diagonals. Okay. Uh, but we can sort of play the same game. Wherever it's zero, we can sort of just ignore the contributions of those phasors. And then when it's minus one, we need to multiply the phasor in that location by minus one. So here we would multiply this by minus one. That would reverse the sign of that phasor. All along this diagonal here, we have to multiply by minus 1, so that changes the sign of all those phasors. And once again, we multiply this by minus 1. Okay, So we can sum along the um, columns and rows, but it's also easy, possible to sum along the diagonals. So this diagonal would give us minus 1. Summing along this diagonal gives me plus 3. This one would give me minus 5 plus 3, and minus 1. So I have 6 uh, minus 7, so I get minus 1. And that's a relatively small value, so it's saying that the value of my Fourier transform, 0, 0 is minus 1. And that's not surprising. It's a relatively small number because this uniform phasor pattern is not a very good match for my object. Uh, let's take a look at this case here where we looking at kx equals 0 0.25, ky equals 0. Once again, we'll just get rid of these points along the diagonals where the object is 0.
And once again, we're multiplying by minus 1 along every other diagonal term. So this is going to go to minus 1. Here, this goes to minus 1. This goes to plus j. Sorry, this goes to 1. This is 1. This goes to plus j. This goes to minus 1, minus j, and then plus. And um, once this one goes to plus one. Okay. So once again here, in this case, it's actually a little easier to sum along the columns. So we sum along this column. It's the first column, it's uh, one minus one, one. So that gives us uh, plus one. This plus j minus j cancels out. Here we have one minus one, one. That gives us plus one. Plus and minus j cancels out. And this final column, we get a column sum of plus one. And so overall, we end up with um, plus three. So in this case, zero. The Fourier transform at 0 0.25, zero is equal to three. Let's do one more example here where um, now we have a slightly more complicated uh, phasor pattern here. So let's first of all figure out what this phasor pattern is. The period in the um, x direction is four and we can see the phasors are going uh, counterclockwise as a function of x so we must be kx equals minus 0 0.25. Uh, and similarly, in the y direction, the period here is 4. And we are going, as we go along y, we're going in the counterclockwise, and we're going in the clockwise direction, so we must be ky equals 0 0.25. And now uh, we can simply take our object and multiply the phasor pattern by our object. Um, first thing is we zero out these diagonals where there's no object. So we're multiplying by zero. And then um, we need to multiply where there's minus one, we need to uh, invert the signs of the phasors. And so here we'll multiply, invert this sign to make it go minus one. And here all these ones will go to minus one. And then uh, this one also goes to minus one. Okay. And in this case, it's easiest to sum along the diagonal. So this is minus one, minus three, minus five, minus three, and minus one. And if I sum all those things up together, uh, I simply get minus 13. So in this case, I would say that g of minus 0 0.25 comma 0 0.25 is equal to minus 13. 13, right? Uh, here we take that same uh, phasor pattern and multiply it by uh, the slightly different vector sum, which um, this is a sort of different different object here, which is consisting only of ones and zeros. Um, and in this case, we actually, the, the phasor pattern actually is not the same, so I, I misspoke there. So the, the phasor pattern here now has a period of two in this direction and also a period of two in this direction. And so this happens at kx equals um, 0 0.5, ky equals 0 0.5. So this is actually a higher spatial frequency. Um, this lower phase pattern has a higher spatial frequency than the upper spatial upper phasor pattern. Uh, when we multiply this phasor pattern by the object, once again we zero out along the diagonals. And now in this case, we don't need to um, invert any signs because we, either, we have just ones everywhere else. So we can sum up along the diagonals. This is one, three, five, three, and one. So that sums up to give us 13. And so in this case, we say g of 0 0.5 comma 0 0.5 equals 13. Okay, so basically what we've done is for each of the phasor patterns that we've looked at, we've taken the phasor pattern at that location of kx and ky, multiplied it by the object, 
And in this case, the multiplication is either by zero, which gets rid of that contribution, or by one or minus one. If it's one, it leaves the phase or orientation the same. Minus one uh, inverts the phase or orientation. And then we simply take the sum of all the remaining phasers after we've done all those operations.